Hi everyone, it's Jonathan. I hope that you're all doing great and we're all working on our social distancing and hand washing. It's very good, I think we've done a great job. Um, I know that we've been very aware of it here in our household. Um, so Eric and I wanted to do something fun. Um, I know many of you have attended dinner parties at um, our house either here in Atlanta or when we lived in Austin, Texas. And you know that we love to cook and we love to entertain. And a lot of times people think that it's really difficult. So we decided to record making dinner tonight to show you that it really isn't that difficult if you plan ahead and think smart. Now, we're gonna be making a recipe from a book, a, re a recipe book called Not Afraid of Flavor, Recipes from Magnolia Grill, which is uh, written by Ken and Karen Barker, and they are um, James Beard Foundation award-winning chefs. So this, um, their restaurant, Magnolia Grill, is in Durham, North Carolina. Now, as you can see, we've earmarked all the recipes in this book that we want to try. We're not going to try them all tonight. Um, as Julia Child says in her cookbooks, when you learn a new recipe, don't try to make everything be a brand new recipe for the same meal because you'll never finish it and you'll never get to eat. So typically you make one recipe, doesn't matter if it's a main course or a side dish or dessert that you've never made before and let that be your newness. And then pull in something that um, is a staple, which is what we're gonna do tonight. So tonight for dinner, we are gonna be making Gabriel's favorite crispy Parmesan chicken with lemon and capers, with mashed potatoes and harcourt verts, which is just a fancy name for green beans and a mustard vinaigrette. So. I've got my recipe, I've gone ahead and I've read it. I wanna make sure, do we need to do anything? Yes, I need to make sure the oven is preheated to 250 degrees. So, while you get seated and get ready to learn all about some fun cooking and see some fun techniques and just hang out with us, Eric's behind the camera, by the way. Um, he says hi. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven, gather all my ingredients, wash my hands, and make sure that I have a nice glass of wine. All right, so in the meantime, I've got a couple of other videos for you to watch on how to make the two sides that are going to accompany our Parmesan chicken with lemon and capers. All right, so we're going to make Harcourt's verts in a mustard sauce. Now, what I love about this recipe, one, it's from Martha Stewart, and we know that bitch can cook. All right, so, so excited to make this for you guys. But a couple of things, we're gonna get all of our ingredients set up, which I have on this side, you can't see, but I promise you they're, they're there. And we're going to go ahead and we're gonna blanch our beans. Now, for those of you that don't really cook that much, blanching is a process where food, like a vegetable or a fruit that usually retains a lot of water, like a bean, for example, um, you blanch it in hot, scalding hot water for two to three minutes and then soak it in an ice bath. And what happens is it actually re releases all the moisture from it so that when you go to cook it at a later point or eat it, it is actually more nutritious. So it's very exciting. A um, Couple of notes about this recipe. You can make this in advance. So I made this uh, for a mac and cheese off a few weeks ago and I made it two days in advance and it sits well in the refrigerator because you keep the beans and the dressing separate and then you mix them together at room temperature and serve it. So if you're cooking for a big crowd or you don't have a lot of time or you wanted to do meal prep, you could do this at the beginning of the week and have an instant side ready some night when you're really busy during the week. All right, so on to our first step of the recipe, which is we're gonna bring a large saucepan full of water to a rolling bo uh, boil, which we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my pre-washed beans. I'm not gonna snip them because I bought them from the store and they're ready to go, but you could snip them and you don't have to use a, 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 a French bean. You can use an American green bean. However, these are a little bit tender and have a little bit more flavor than the American bean. All right, so I'm gonna drop those into my scalding hot water, and then I'm gonna set my timer for two minutes. Now, two minutes is just perfect for these beans. Now, other vegetables that you might blanch, you might wanna do for a longer period of time, but usually your recipe will tell you. All right, so we're gonna let that get going, and in just
just a few minutes, we're going to finish that and then we're going to make our sauce. Now our sauce is going to have a finely diced shallot, some red wine vinegar, salt and pepper of course, olive oil, and a stone ground Dijon mustard. Now you can use any kind of mustard you want, it does not matter. I like the stone ground style because it is a little bit uh, thicker, so it coats the bean a little bit better. So, but we'll talk more, more about that in a second. All right, we've got a minute left, so while that's getting going, want it to get to a nice little boil. We need to create an ice bath, okay? So, get a nice big pan, bowl, whatever you want to call it. And then we're gonna put in some nice ice cold water as well as ice. And this is what we're going to finish the blanching process. Wow, that's a lot, that's a big piece of ice, but all right, we'll just go with it. Now, you can use tap water, you can use whatever water you drink. I use filtered water because, well, I'm extra. All right, we're almost done with our um, scalding hot water. Another couple of seconds. All right, perfect. So we're very carefully going to take this off the stove and we're going to strain it. Whew, warm. And then we're going to ever so gently take our beans from our strainer and get them into this ice cold bath. Now this is going to stop the cooking process, right? So the beans won't get mushy and they'll end up coming out crisp and firm and crunchy. All right. Beautiful, I'm just gonna soak these, nice, okay. I'm gonna put this to the side for a minute and we can come back to that. So, while that is cooling, let's go ahead and start making our sauce. So now we know that we need about a half teaspoon of a finely chopped uh, shallot. Now, anybody that has been to a dinner party at my house knows that I like a lot of flavor. So I'm not gonna measure a half a teaspoon, because that's not a lot of shallots to me. Shallots are so beautiful, they're so delicious. So I'm just gonna chop this whole shallot, all right? So I apologize if I cry, because they usually make me cry. Know that it's me, not you. <laughs> all right, let's get all this skin peeled off. Now, most people hate cutting anything in the onion family, right? Because it does make you cry, right? But I did learn a quick and easy trick that will help us. I'm gonna slice down the center and leave the root intact. Okay, so see here I've got the root intact here, which as I'm chopping, it's going to hold it together. And I'm gonna cut some ridges in here. And then I'm just ever so lightly going to chop. Nice and easy. Look at how easy that was. All right. So now we've got that going in there and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Ooh, I can feel the tears coming. All right. Shallot chopped. Now, before we move on, I'm gonna wash my hands and get all this whew, onion off of them. This is the perfect time to start talking about hygiene, making sure that we are washing our hands in nice hot water for 20 seconds. Now, I'm not gonna sing you a song. I don't think that I need to, but there is a video on Facebook of Charo doing it, okay? And she says it's to, she counts one Mississippi, two Mississippi, but she says it, Miss, Mrs. Vipe or something like that. It's really, really funny. So I suggest that you search that out and watch it. Okay. Huh. That 
should be about enough. All right, on to making the rest of the sauce. So, like I said, we need our stone ground mustard. We're also going to use a little bit of red wine vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper. So first, we're going to put the shallot, which we already have in our bowl, and then we're going to add two, mm, sorry, one and a half teaspoons of red wine vinegar. Okay, here's one, we'll do a little extra, we'll do a little extra just for fun. Okay, and we're going to let this, we're going to stir this around with our whisk, and then we're going to let this marinate for 15 minutes. And the reason is we want the vinegar to start to break down some of the onion. All right, so we'll let that sit for 15 minutes. All right, while our shallot is marinating over here, we're gonna play with our blanched beans. You know, I do love the name Blanche. Obviously, it comes back to loving my golden girls, right? Miss Blanche Devereaux. I wonder if she ever made blanched beans. Anyway, not the point. All right, so we're gonna remove these from the ice bath and we're gonna do very, very gently pat them dry because we're gonna put them aside for a later time. Now remember, like I said, these guys can sit in your refrigerator uh, probably a day, two days tops. So if you've got some extra time and you want a quick easy snack or whatever, or a quick easy side, again, you can blanch your beans and, and use them at a later point. Now, you can store these however you want in the refrigerator. You can either put them in a Ziploc bag, a reusable bag. I usually tend to do them in a Tupperware container, and that is it, you know, it doesn't get crushed by anything else in the refrigerator or anything that falls on it. All right, so we waited our 15 minutes and we've had our uh, shallots marinating nice and slow for us. I wanna go ahead and add just a little pinch of salt and a little bit of, of nice ground black pepper right in there. And we'll give that a nice little whisk and just let that marinate for a second. So the next piece we're gonna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna mix in our stone ground mustard, okay? So let's get all of that yumminess. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix this in collecting all that salt and pepper that we just put in there into this mixture. All right, see it's very um, fragrant, it smells great. Okay, so the next piece is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into our mixture. Now you don't wanna do it all at once, you don't wanna just dump it in there. The reason why is we wanna pour it in a slow stream. Now, if you had someone to help you, they could pour it for you as you're mixing. Um, I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time and what I'm looking to do is to get the oil to emulsify into the mixture. Okay, so just gonna do a little tiny bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna whisk that. It's kind of like when you make a salad dressing and you want like an Italian salad dressing and you want the oil to mix with the vinegar. That's what we're doing here. We want the oil to emulsify with this. All right, so that's going. I'm just gonna keep adding. can see how it's begun to emulsify in to our mixture and it looks sort of like a nice glaze almost. It's not a glaze but it looks like it. Let's do a little. Mm. I'm gonna do just a little bit more. All right we're emulsified enough. 
so now the next step is we're gonna take, and we're just gonna transfer it to a plastic container so it's out of the way. Again, if you were making this a day or two in advance of your dinner, you just um, put it in the refrigerator and you know, one or two hours before you're ready to serve it, just take um, this out along with the beans. Remember, they should be kept separate. Um, you just take it out of the refrigerator and let it get up to room temperature before you um, serve it. And when we go to serve, we'll just throw everything. All I do is I take my plastic container that I've stored my uh, beans in, I pour this over it, I give it a shake and that coats it all so you don't have to dirty another pan. All right, let's do, I'm just gonna do a little test, see if I need to, that's good. All right, and that is our French green beans in a mustard vinaigrette. dishes tonight we're going to be having mashed potatoes because they're such a staple in most households um, I think everybody knows how to make mashed potatoes I think it's just the amount of love and care that you put into them that make them so delicious um, one of my tricks that makes such great delicious tasting uh, mashed potatoes is really ensuring that as you're boiling your potatoes that you're letting them become very loose. You don't want them to fall apart and disintegrate, but you want them to be very, very soft to the touch. So that's where we are now. We're gonna take this and we're gonna strain it. Now, one of the things that I find too is that potatoes actually, as you cook them, they absorb some of the water, right? So that's what helps to, when you see them and you feel, oh, they're kind of squishy, it's because there's additional water in them. So what I usually do is I put my pan, we have an electric stove, so if you have a gas stove, you might want to leave it on. But I take my pan and I take my, my strained potatoes and I toss them back in the pan. Now, the reason why I toss them back in the pan, let's get that water off, is that I want, you hear that sizzling? That's the sound I want to hear. I'm not frying the potatoes, I'm just helping to burn off some of that extra moisture that they have absorbed all right and that will actually make for a fluffier uh, potato that's not runny so you want creamy potatoes not runny potatoes so while that's doing its thing let's go ahead and get our butter and our milk now you can make it with any kind of butter any kind of milk you could use chicken stock you can use low fat, 2% skin, whatever kind of milk you want. I actually like to use buttermilk <laughs> or heavy whipping cream. And I think, yes, not good for you, not overly healthy, but everything in moderation. All right, and then I've got some butter, which I use about a quarter of a cup of butter. Again, that helps make it nice and creamy. That should be good, all right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in some salt, okay? and then some pepper, so again, nice seasonings. And again, you choose the level of, of spice, salt, whatever that you want that is appropriate for your family or for the dish that you're cooking. I also add in a couple of additional ingredients that you might not think to put in mashed potatoes. I always add in a little bit of paprika. I think it just adds a nice additional flavor. And then depending on your mood, I like to add in some dried herbs or you can add in fresh herbs, so tonight, I've selected some basil. I think it's gonna just add a nice little sweetness. All right, then we go ahead and we add in our butter and our cream, or buttermilk, should I say. Now, you don't have to uh, put all the milk that you're gonna use in first. I think it's good to come back and put in a second round if you feel that they're not creamy enough. Now, I use an electric mixer because I feel it gives you the best consistency um, as far as a creaminess. Uh, doesn't have a lot of lumps, but if you want to snatch them together, by all means. All right. 
So we're just going to let all this absorb in together. Get the excess off of that. Now, one of the things I love about mashed potatoes, because it is a staple and you may eat it once or twice during the week, is that it's okay to go ahead and prep this in advance. You know, reheated mashed potatoes can be delicious. You just have to do it the right way. So usually what we do in this house is at the beginning of the week on Sunday after we go to the grocery store, we'll do some meal prep. So we'll make some rice, some other vegetables, and there's always some sort of a mashed potato. And I just store it in a nice glass um, storage dish that I can put in the refrigerator and when I'm ready to cook it I can put this whole thing in the oven and heat it up. Also works well in the microwave. Either way is fine whichever works best for you. Once it's heated through you pull it out and then you go ahead and you add just a little bit of butter and stir it in and that just kind of gives it a little bit of extra creaminess. So we're just going to transfer this into our glass dish for storage and then our sides for dinner are ready. All right, who is ready to make some chicken? Before we begin, I neglected in the first part of this video to thank the person that gave this wonderfully beautiful cookbook to me. Thank you so much, Kat Rutherford, from the bottom of my heart. This is probably the third time I've made this dish because we just love it. It's very similar to a chicken piccata. It's kind of, sort of like a more southern version of a chicken piccata because it's got some Parmesan cheese in it. So let's go through the ingredients that I've pulled so far. There are a couple that I haven't because they need to be refrigerated. So obviously first we have our four boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which are lightly pounded. Nobody wants to see raw chicken, so I've left it to the side. We have a half a cup of flour, two eggs, three quarters of a cup of dry breadcrumbs. Now the recipe calls for plain dry breadcrumbs. I used whole wheat because that's what I had in the house, so feel free to make substitutions again as you feel necessary. Then I've also got some finely grated Parmesan cheese, about a quarter of a cup. I've got some chopped parsley and obviously some salt and pepper is always a great thing. And that's gonna go all on our chicken. Then we've also got some ingredients that we're gonna use for the lemon caper brown butter sauce. So obviously we've got the lemons and then everyone's favorite, I know, Stephanie, uh, capers, which are so delicious. They're like little mini olives. And then also some more um, chopped parsley as well as butter, which I've left that in the fridge. So I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna start going through our steps. Now, our first step is we need to assemble the chicken breast itself because we're gonna coat them with our Parmesan and our cheese and our, and our uh, salt and pepper and, and flour so that they can cook, sear up very nicely in our skillet. So. What the directions say, it says, place the flour in a shallow bowl or pie plate. Now, in this house, this is what our shallow bowl looks like. It's not exactly convenient for dredging chicken through it. So instead, we like to use baking sheets because it just makes it so much easier for everybody involved. So we need one baking sheet for the flour and we're gonna need another baking sheet for the breadcrumbs and the Parmesan cheese. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my flour here. Okay. And then I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put my breadcrumbs and my Parmesan cheese on this guy, like so. Look at that, I get all of that out. And then to my Parmesan cheese breadcrumb mixture, I'm gonna season it with some S and P, some salt and pepper. Ooh, who remembers salt and pepper, right? 90s reference, nobody? Anyway, so some salt and pepper, and I'm gonna get a little fork and I'm gonna mix these guys up. So we'll get this all mixed in together. We get all of our yumminess. Let me do our coating. There we go. And, 
All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, and then we also need to use this shallow dish and we're gonna beat into it two eggs. Okay. Here's one. Gross. All right, and I'm gonna beat my eggs over here. All right. And we've got some beat, some beat up eggs. Okay, so that's the first step. Really easy so far, right? So our next step, we're gonna dredge each chicken bre breast in the flour. We're gonna shake off any excess. Then we're going to dip it into the egg and then drop it in this guy over here and coat it. And then we're gonna place it on a third pan. Okay. Flour. Nice and coated, right? Okay. We're going to dredge it in our egg mixture. Get that all nice and coated. And then we're going to drop it over here. You can rub it into it. However you feel that you need to do it to get it nice and coated, do it. Okay. I'm just gonna place that off to the side and grab the next one. So it's been just about 20 minutes of our chicken chilling in the fridge, getting ready to uh, get cooked. So the next step, we want to heat up our skillet. So nonstick, cast iron, doesn't really matter. I use this really, really large one because it can fit more um, and it just really browns everything very beautifully. Um, it's heating, it's got some nice olive oil in it. I want to say it's two to three tablespoons of olive oil. So then let's go ahead and take our chicken out of the refrigerator. Mmm, look at that. And then we're just going to brown it. Now, because my pan is not super huge, I'm able to do two, uh, two pieces at a time. We're gonna cook it for four to five minutes on each side till it's a nice golden brown. Then we'll flip it over and do the same. And then when those two pieces are done, in order to keep them warm, we'll go ahead and we'll put them in our oven. I've gone ahead and I've put a plate in there already so it's nice and warm. So it'll keep our chicken uh, nice and warm and it won't get soggy. I really think that it is very important when you are cooking to drink wine. I mean, wine just makes everything better. I have a nice crisp Sauvignon Blanc, which lucky for me, my favorite Sauvignon Blanc Matua from uh, New Zealand has been on special at the supermarket, two for $13.99. It's been very nice. It's been a Matua household around here. Mmm, refreshing. Okay, now that our chicken is in the oven, we have put our mashed potatoes in there. They're nice and toasty warm, and we've uh, dressed our green beans. It's now time to make our sauce. So it is a lemon caper brown butter sauce. So we're gonna take four tablespoons of unsalted butter and melt it in a small saucepan over medium heat. Now we're gonna let it cook until the butter starts to turn brown. That's where the brown butter flavor comes in. And it, 
you'll, you'll notice is that it'll start to go brown and the bubbles that you see happening will start to go away, okay? And during it, you should you know, keep it moving because you don't want it to scald your pan. Um, and you'll notice as you're smelling it that one, the butter is browning, but also that there's sort of like, I'll call it a sediment that's at the bottom, that's the browning part happening. So just keep stirring it, it'll start to smell nutty. It doesn't take very, very long at medium heat, a couple of minutes. We'll let it sit, but you see most of that bubbling that you saw has stopped. So that means that it really is truly browning at this point. Just let that go. Okay. The other ingredients that we need for this are our capers, our parsley, because we're going to uh, mix that in, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Now again, like with anything, you can put your desired level of salt and pepper in. All right, we're gonna add our capers. Did not expect that to happen, but it did. We're gonna let this fry for about 30 seconds. those flavors mix together in our brown butter. Then after 30 seconds or so, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now you can use fresh lemon juice, you could use lemon juice from a bottle, doesn't really matter. I prefer fresh, yes Crimson, I know. I prefer fresh lemon juice and I usually squeeze it right in. Now half of a, of a regular size, normal size lemon will be about two tablespoons. So we'll let that stir for a second and then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add in our parsley. Give that a whirl. Now, I probably won't add a lot of salt to this because, you know, the capers are themselves salty. So I'm just gonna add just a pinch Put that back over there. And I'll add a little bit of pepper. And voila! We've made the sauce. So I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna actually turn this down to a really low simmer so we can start to get our other ingredients out so that we can put everything together. Okay friends, well here you have it. We're at the end of our journey together. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, hang out with us and watch us cook dinner. Uh, remember we're cooking from Not Afraid of Flavor, recipes from Magnolia Grill, and tonight we are having Gabriel's favorite crispy Parmesan lemon caper chicken. And as my favorite chef said, boom!